According to the latest reports from The Washington Post, The New York Post, and over a thousand journalists from more than 10 international mainstream media outlets, including Reuters, Bloomberg, Los Angeles Times, and The Washington Post, collectively signed an open letter. This letter was published on the Committee to Protect Journalists' official website. The content of this letter strongly condemns Israel's brutal killing of journalists in Gaza. It also criticizes Western media for adopting a double standard, favoring Israel after the Israel-Palestine conflict. The letter further requests all media outlets to truthfully report Israel's atrocities. The letter emphasizes that the killing of journalists and suppressing freedom of speech, such as Israel's actions, has been ongoing for decades. The open letter calls for journalists to fearlessly and impartially reveal the whole truth, warning that failure to do so would make them accomplices to genocide. It states, we must recognize that distorting facts to conceal evidence of Israel's war crimes against the Palestinians is a dereliction of journalistic duty and an abandonment of moral clarity. The urgency of this moment cannot be overstated. We must change course. Shortly after the signing of the open letter, a notable event took place at Foley Square in Manhattan, New York, commemorating journalists killed by Israel in Gaza. Numerous journalists attended the event, laying flowers for their fallen colleagues and angrily condemning Israel's inhumane actions. They pledged to uphold the legacy of their deceased colleagues and report on everything happening in Gaza fairly and justly. In this video, we will start with the outrage of the news industry against Israel, delve into the latest international situation, and discuss the following topics, the dire situation of the conflict, Israel's audacity in China, the global outcry against Israel is growing, Biden's predicament. Historically, the US-led Western bloc has firmly controlled global media and public opinion, consistently using double standards in reporting. This is also the core pillar of the United States building cultural hegemony, providing them the authority to define everything from human rights, freedom, democracy, to terrorism. If someone doesn't agree, they can be charged with various accusations. However, since the 2023 Israel-Palestine conflict, Israel has slaughtered more than at least 36 journalists, 59 UN staff members, 4,000 children, 10,000 civilians. Israel has been openly killing, bombing schools and hospitals, without any restraint. Israel's actions have left bad-mouthing journalists from unruly media outlets baffled. All the photos, videos, and figures are laid out here, impossible to whitewash. There's no way to claim this is Israel exercising its right to self-defense. The whole world sees it, which country or terrorist organization is truly anti-human. On November 9, the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations stated that Israel's internal security agencies had declared they would eliminate all participants in the October 7 Hamas attack on Israel. He emphasized that journalists documenting the attack would be added to the list. This outrageous move shocked the global news community. Never before has there been such a blatant assassination threat against international journalists, openly declared by a country's ambassador to the United Nations. Israel is openly declaring itself an enemy of global media workers, unconcerned about how the world judges it. Israel says, I've already killed over 10,000 civilians. Do you think I'm afraid of your criticism? Anyone who dares criticize me will be killed together. In China, Israel is acting recklessly. The Israeli consulate in Shanghai openly releases information on discussions about combating anti-Semitism. This scene is all too familiar to the Chinese. Eighty years ago, Japan aggressively arrested anti-Japanese activists in China. Today, Israel is absurdly contemplating arresting anti-Semitic individuals in China. What does Israel define as anti-Semitism? If you condemn actions that kill women, children, and civilians, you are deemed anti-Semitic because only Israel dares to openly massacre civilians in the world. The global opposition against Israel is growing louder. Last month, London witnessed a demonstration supporting Palestinians with over 100,000 participants. On November 11, London saw another massive demonstration, this time with 300,000 people. The London police stated that this might be one of the largest protests in British history. On the same day, in a global coordinated effort, multiple countries held events supporting Palestine, protesting Israel's attacks on Gaza, and calling for a ceasefire. 
This included cities like Barcelona in Spain, Paris in France, Berlin in Germany, Ankara in Turkey, Sydney in Australia, and more. Now that Israel has indicated it will not stop its attacks on Gaza, the scale of various pro-Palestinian rallies is likely to increase. And all of this is where Biden is currently facing the most challenges. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party are different. Republican representatives like Trump directly proclaim, America first, not caring about the world's opinion. While the Democratic Party has consistently waved the banner of ideology, considering democracy, freedom, and human rights as political correctness, they have controlled the global media's direction. They manipulate the majority of NGOs, using the flag of morality to conduct color revolutions through media and NGOs, a tactic they favor. It's precisely because of this that the United States can stand on the moral high ground to criticize others. But now, all three trump cards of the United States have been utterly destroyed. The US loves to talk about human rights, yet Israel has committed the largest state-level terrorist atrocity post-World War II, openly massacring over 10,000 civilians, including more than 4,000 children. Moreover, this brutality continues to happen every day under the watchful eyes of the entire world. The US loves to talk about freedom, but Israel is openly suppressing freedom of speech, causing chaos worldwide, and ruthlessly slaughtering international journalists in Gaza. The number surpasses the total of journalists killed post-World War II, and they are even openly declaring threats of assassination. The US loves to talk about democracy, but now global public opinion is crystal clear. All people, even the entire public opinion of the entire Western bloc, stand against Israel's brutal killings of civilians. If the US still wants these three cards and global support, it must distance itself from Israel's inhumane actions, it must condemn Israel. However, to the disappointment of the world, the US is instead deploying more troops to the Middle East, blatantly aiding the oppressor. According to a CNN report on November 9, American diplomats stationed in Arab countries have privately issued stern warnings to the Biden administration, stating that the robust support from the United States for Israel's destructive and deadly military actions in Gaza is causing America to lose a generation of Arab people. Additionally, both Blinken and Biden have proposed humanitarian ceasefires and tactical ceasefires to Israel, which, however, have been rejected by Israel. These occurrences indicate that the United States has realized the severity of the Israel-Palestine conflict. In fact, the problems facing the United States are even more serious than mentioned above. Israel's massacres will only give rise to more occurrences of Hamas, and Palestinian children either do not grow up, or when they do, they become part of Hamas. As the saying goes, there is no Hamas, just children who once wept in the ruins growing up. The decline of the American image is not only limited to the Arab world. The United States is also helpless, but before it strikes others, it at least finds a superficially justifiable reason. However, the unconditional support for Israel's bloody massacre will significantly damage America's image in the hearts of people worldwide, dealing a considerable blow to American political standing. However, this does not mean that Biden will change course. The support for Israel by the United States will continue as usual. The reason is that supporting Israel is an absolute political correctness in the United States. In the US, you can criticize the president, but you cannot be anti-Semitic. Just a few days ago, there was an incident where a New York Times reporter was ousted for criticizing Israel. Biden and his team dared not go against this current. Simultaneously, the Jewish financial conglomerates slash capital in the US. Do not permit any anti-Semitic sentiments. If Biden does not support Israel, once the powerful Jewish capital support is gone in the 2024 elections, Biden will lose any chance of re-election. In other words, supporting Israel will significantly harm America's future, but not supporting Israel means Biden will immediately lose his future. He can only choose the latter. These considerations are not of primary importance. For other countries, the key is how to leverage this current situation in the United States, sticking America in the Middle East and getting it entangled in the quagmire of Middle East wars. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We genuinely appreciate your support.